लाउडर राहुल लाउडर विकेट वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट क्रिकेटर्स इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ द गेम राहुल Warm welcome, Rahul. So, it is true. He really came. We are waiting. <laughs> we are waiting the last half an hour or so. Okay, I would like to welcome the dignitaries on stage. Again, with a big round of applause, please welcome the Pro Chancellor H S Balal. Vice Chancellor Vinod Bhat, he is not here. Okay. Pro Vice Chancellor Purnima Baliga, Pro Vice Chancellor P L N G Rao, not here as well. Vidhistar Narayana Sabahit, not here. Sports Secretary, we just met him, Vinod Nayak. <laughs> Student, and now he is working here as well. Joint Sports Secretary Shobha Irappa. <laughs> Rahul, I don't know if you remember this morning. I said hello to you in the airport bus. It was me. <laughs> you just kept looking down the phone, and a lot of other people who came and took selfies. He quietly and uh, he obliged. Please put your hands together to welcome Sudarshan Ballal. Actually, when I started playing cricket, um, I didn't have the vision of wanting to play f uh, professionally. I mean, I really, I started cricket because I just loved it. I just loved it as a kid, um, as a young boy growing up in in Bangalore, and um, you know, in uh, I used to play cricket and. Different sports with my friends on the road, and any empty plot we could find, and all the summer holidays, uh, I would just play sport, and I loved playing cricket. And uh, it's only slowly when I started sort of getting selected in school teams and in sort of some under junior representative state teams, and started doing well that that I thought, oh wow, you know, seriously, I think I can make this a career, and 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 then playing for India and aspiring to play for India. Uh, you know, became a dream and became something that I wanted to do to represent my country. Um, but, but like I said, you know, I, I I genuinely started playing the game because something attracted the game to me. My father loved cricket, and you know, I I remember going to he would take me to all the cricket matches in Bangalore. Whenever there were matches, you know, we would he at least one day in the test match he would somehow wrangle a few tickets in those days and take me to the stands and and show me show me a cricket match because he loved doing it. And I remember hearing sort of you know. Commentary in those days, there was no television, and and you know, sort of radio commentary. Uh, and and my father was a big fan of Gavaskar and Vishwanath, so he'd tell me stories about them. So, so I think somewhere along the line, the love of the game was sort of inculcated uh, to me by him and his love of the game. Uh, and I just, you know, loved playing the game. So, uh, honestly, I never thought of this as a, as a huge career or a profession. Uh, I'm grateful and and truly blessed that it's become like that. It's become uh, I've been able to make, like I say, uh, my hobby, my profession for so many years, and I I can continue to stay involved in the game through coaching and things like that. And I think that's a, a great privilege and a, and something that I'm truly grateful for. Uh, but but yeah, when I started playing for India, then you know I wanted to one of the things once I started playing, I wanted to I didn't think of a goal as number of matches or number of thing. I always thought that. I should play and make a significant contribution to any team that I play in, whether it was Karnataka or whether it was India, and you know, uh, you know, hopefully over the years I've been able to do that. Wow! So everything you have done in the career is a big bonus. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> wow. Okay. Open for questions. Uh, I'm going to come around with the mic. Those. Uh, yes. Yes. Good morning, sir. Uh, Good morning. Uh, my name is Guru. Hi, Guru. Uh, 
So my question is, in this present day scenario where education is given a little more importance than sports, how do we think? How do you think like we can bring about change where sports gives is given more importance? Uh, look, I think both of them are very, very, uh, very, very important, and I say this obviously with <laughs> <laughs> I'm in kind of company that you know I've got. To <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I think I think it's changing. You know, I think. Look, look where we are. I mean, we are in an incredible sports facility in the middle of, you know, one of the top universities in the country. And so much of time, um, so much of space and money has been utilized in creating a facility for, for students who are, are, you know, most of you are doctors and engineers and, you know, doing other professions. But you yet you have access to these kind of facilities. Sure, some of you might go on to play professionally or might take up career in sport, but most of you will not you know, because you come here to study and, and, and you have other dreams and other aspirations. Uh, in spite of that, these facilities have, have been provided to you. So I think it is slowly changing. People are recognizing that sport today uh, can become a, a future career choice. It's definitely a, a great way to, a healthy way of living. You know, I, I truly believe that everyone should play sport, everyone should do outdoor activities, and it could be any sport, it doesn't have to be cricket or, you know, it, it could be hiking, it could be walking, it could be anything, uh, that, that we should participate in, in a lot of physical activity and outdoor sport. Uh, but, um, <clears throat> but, you know, I think you're seeing in India it's changing with so many new leagues, so many new competitions. Uh, in the past, you know, people used to say the only sport you can really make a profession in and, 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 and think of it as a profession was cricket. Today is not the case. I mean, you see badminton players, you see tennis players, you see kabaddi players. So it's changing. It's slowly changing. I think it's, you know, it's an evolving space. It's an evolving ecosystem. Uh, and, and I think that journey has become, has begun, and, uh, and there's no going back on that. Super. Thank you. Those who come prepared with your questions and yes. Good morning, sir. I'm Kritika Shastri. And my question okay. is, uh, how hard was it to adapt from being a recognized test player to playing shortest format of a game, of this game? Yeah, uh, a really good question. So again, growing up, uh, you know, one, once I started playing the sport and once I started playing cricket, I always wanted to be a test cricketer, you know, because especially in my generation growing up, test cricket was everything. You know, there was one day cricket, but it was, you know, still coming up. It wasn't that popular. Uh, and there was definitely no 2020 cricket. So everything I did was to be a test cricketer. So I remember when I was, um, you know, when I was uh, starting to play, uh, my coach, the late Mr. Keki Tarapo, is a lovely man and a really good coach. Um, he used to have a rule. You know, if you hit the ball in the air in the nets, he would stop you from batting and make you run two rounds around the ground. <laughs> imagine, imagine telling like uh, the young cricketers today, Rishabh Pant, don't hit the ball. <laughs> so. That's how things have changed, right? And, and it sort of changed in my career and I was lucky, you know, I always tell people I was really lucky because I got to see, um, you know, I got to begin my career thinking I wanted to be a test cricketer and I got to finish the last few years of my career actually playing T20 cricket, you know, in the IPL and playing one match for India. So I actually got to see the whole gamut of things. So in that sense, I was very, very lucky. So the changes was, yes, I mean, I think, you know, there were uh, certain uh, technical changes that you had to do and certain shots that you have to develop for the one-day format of the game, which probably in test cricket I hadn't grown up learning how to do. So I had to develop those things, but more importantly, it was also a mindset change. You know, I had to change my thinking, I had to change my mindset uh, that, you know, 2020 was a faster format of the game. You know, you couldn't take uh, one hour to get set like I used to in a test match. Sometimes two hours. You know, you could bat the whole day. But uh, here, you know, if you bat it more than 10, 12 balls without doing anything, people are shouting from outside, hey, come on. So you had to change your thinking that you had to attack from the first ball, which probably I wasn't, you know, uh, you, you're not used to in test cricket. But it was great fun. I loved playing uh, all the formats of the game. And it, like I said, I was lucky that at the end of the year, I was able to experience 2020 cricket. Otherwise, you know, a generation before me, probably didn't experience uh, this format of the game. You had a question, right? Uh, hello, sir. I'm Sarthak. We are all doctors here. Uh, so the theme of uh, Manipal Marathon 2020 is organ donation. So we uh, sports person are the ones with the healthiest organs, if you can say. <laughs> then uh, how would you promote organ donation among sports person in India, like Virat Kohli and, and, the, and others, they should go ahead and do organ donation. How, how would you recommend, how would you promote it? 
Yeah, I think it's a, it's incredible what you're doing. First, we started raising raising awareness around organ donation, which is an incredibly important thing. Uh, you know, I think some things like this and, and events like this that you guys conduct and things that you do, I think, is something that will raise awareness and will encourage more and more people maybe to to get more knowledge about what it is, uh, what is it all about. Because I guess, you know, in, in our country there might be certain taboos, there might be certain fears around a, a lot of these things and young kids like you and young people like you, you know, doing these things, raising awareness for this, definitely goes ahead and, uh, and does it and, you know, I think it's, uh, it's uh, I mean, I don't know as much about it as, as probably some of you do, so I would love to hear about it someday. Yes. Hi, good morning. I'm Sonal. Um, at the outset, I'd just like to say I have a photo taken with you at Melbourne. Oh, uh, God. He's I didn't want that photograph. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's deep. Uh, what would I ask my younger self? Uh, oh, God. Uh, I think... Uh, There's just a, maybe somewhere along the line I probably would have, be, I would have told my younger self that maybe I could have relaxed a little bit more or I could have enjoyed the process a little bit more. I think sometimes when you're in a high pressure situation or when you're in a high pressure profession, you get so caught up in, in what you're doing that you sometimes forget to sit back and, and enjoy the whole process of what it is. Maybe it took me a long time to figure out that enjoying the journey and the process was as important as achieving the things and the goals that I wanted to do. Um, so I think that would be definitely some advice that I would uh, you know, give to, to my younger self, is that the process and the journey is as important as the goals that you want to achieve. Super. Yes, those who come prepared with the questions. Hi sir, this is Harish. Uh, sir, what advice you would like to give for youngest cricketer and uh, what uh, institute like uh, Mike can do to promote sports? Uh, I don't know, I mean I haven't, I haven't seen a facility like this in uh, anywhere really. So forget, let alone, uh, I'm not sure what more they're going to do but uh, look, I think it's, uh, I think one of the things that I would tell you know young sportsmen irrespective of whether they're young cricketers is that you always got to keep learning. I think one of the most important things is is a mindset and an attitude to learn. Uh, you know I think having that kind of mindset of wanting to um, be curious, to be enthusiastic about being curious, about discovering new things about your sport or about yourself. I mean, it could be anything and, and not only sport, I think. Just, you know, I think having that, that level of curiosity, that uh, desire to constantly keep learning, I think is, is really, really important for a sportsman. Uh, you know, at no stage, uh, and sometimes learning is tough, learning is hard. Uh, learning forces you to, a constant quest for learning forces you to go out of your boundaries. It forces you to go out of your comfort zone. You know, because it challenges you to take you to a constant, dif to a different level that sometimes is not easy to do. Uh, and I think that is very, very important. That attitude of wanting to constantly learn, uh, I think is, um, is something that's very, very important if you want to, you know, uh, achieve and or get the best out of yourself. It's not about whether you go on to play for India, how much you play for India. I think you want to be the best version of yourself and the best version of yourself requires you to constantly keep learning. Super. Hello sir, it's a privilege speaking to you. So my question for you is, considering the World Cup is just around the corner and the most talked about question right now is India's number four batsman. Uh, now Ajinkya Rahane, Rishabh Pant, Ambadi Raidu have been excluded from the Indian squad and uh, Vijay Shankar has taken their place. So what's your take on the Indian team selection considering Ajinkya Rahane's experience in the England wicket? <laughs> Jeez. Look, I mean, I'm not going to get into specifics and I'm not going to say that. You know, I think you, you, sometimes you've got to give um, the selectors in this country, everyone has an opinion. Yeah, I mean, my uh, my driver dropping me to the airport today had an opinion on it. You know, so it's it, it's just the way it is. You know, and I think the the beauty is that what I'd like to say is that India has so many options. I think the very fact that we're debating so many players coming through, so many good young players, 
and and we've seen it and just coaching the india a team over the last three and a half years you know you can name six or seven boys i mean you've named three of them you know you can name manish pandey shreya sayar you know all of these guys have also done well on the a to you know there's some really good performers so there's so many good players and i think that's a good position that we find ourselves in some people will you know you can only pick 15 and there will always be disappointments and we can debate it to and fro and we can go backwards but i think you know once the team is selected then we got to back it and we got to get behind it and and focus on on trying to do well in the world cup everyone is a deserving candidate you know the guys who missed out honestly if you had picked them there would be enough people who can justify that and enough people who will say no no they shouldn't have been picked so you know we can have those arguments either way and and, and someone who coaches a lot of these guys it's pretty unfair for me to actually pinpoint and say what well, is you know because I actually am coaching all of them to try and get into the team. So, you know, for me to take sides on that is, is probably not fair. <laughs> Hello, sir. This is Rajdeep here. Uh, I want to ask you something. We know cricket is a gentleman, gentleman game. So, uh, but the scenario nowadays is you are known to keep your cool on the pitch. But nowadays, a lot of players, they are not able to and they are crossing the line of sledging. So, the biggest question we all wonder is, how did you keep your cool on the pitch, even in the worst scenario? Uh, well, I mean, I kept my cool somehow on the pitch, but not always off it, yes. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I just think it's just, uh, you know, I, I've sort of realized in my career that if I, you know, I think through experience, I just learned that if I get caught up in, you know, trying to sledge or get involved in conversations with people, I, I get out of my comfort zone and out of my bubble and I'm not able to perform well. So I just focused on trying to do what I needed to do and stay, you know, in my space. And then in the end, the scoreboard was always the best judge. I mean, if somebody told you something, if you scored 100 at the end of the day, you could point to the scoreboard and say, boss, I won that contest. <laughs> if you didn't, you just don't say anything. So. But I think, you know, every personality is different and, and everyone has to bring his personality to the table. I mean, you can't expect everyone to be the same. You know, I, I think as long as you just had a careful and you don't cross the limit, then I think you bringing your personality to the sports field is very, very important because if you try to be someone you're not, you know, if I try to be Sevak and Sevak tries to be me, we're both not going to succeed, right? So we've got to be ourselves and I think that's very, really important. Yes. Good morning, sir. My name is Shriya. The question I would like to ask you is, what is the most important thing you learned on the field that you applied to your life off the field? Uh, the most important thing that I've learned on the field is, um, that I apply, is that uh, the sun always comes up the next day. <laughs> uh, you know, you experience a lot of failure in sport and cricket and, and sometimes it can seem like the world is going to end and there's so many dis and there's disappointments. I think cricket, is a large part of the game is more about disappointment and failure than it is about success. Uh, as strange as it may seem because we glorify the success a lot, we forget that, you know, you fail more than you succeed in sport. But, you know, one thing I think I've learned over the years is that whatever it is, it always passes. The sun comes up the next morning, it's a new day, it's new opportunities, it's something to look forward to. Uh, looking ahead is more important. The learning from your mistakes or learning from what's happened in the past is important. And once you've do, done that, it's important to look ahead and, look, and move on. Right? So whatever situation I found myself on a cricket field and disappointments, the sun always came up the next day. There was always something to look forward to. Uh, there was always something to aim for. There was always something to aspire for. And, you know, dwelling too much on the past, once you've learned from the past, uh, is not helpful to anyone. So I try and do that nowadays. Rahul, well, he answered the maximum number of questions before you enter. Everything about you. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Thanks. Good morning, sir. So I have been your fan since 20 years. Thank you. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, first of all, thanks for serving our nation and again doing the same after retirement and nurturing the new talents. Thank you. So my question is, uh, so which was the toughest phase of your career and how did you overcome that? Uh, the toughest phase of my career would be uh, maybe around 2008, 2009 when, um, you know, I went through a really bad patch for about a couple of years really where, you know, I didn't score a lot of runs and I wasn't in the one day team as well. So, uh, you know, it was, was really difficult for me, I, I, especially after I played a lot. Um, so at that stage in your career, you know, when you go through a tough phase as a youngster, you have less doubt sometimes when you're sort of at that stage I was already 34 35 
um, and which is old sometimes for a sportsman. So you start doubting whether you know you've lost it or your eyesight is not good or you know you start doubting sometimes your abilities. Um, and it was a, a difficult phase in my career, but I think what really kept me going was I think the f question I answered in the beginning was that I loved playing the game. You know, I didn't even at that stage I loved playing the sport and I wanted to keep playing the sport. So I always told people even if I get dropped from the Indian team, I'll still play for Karnataka because at the moment I feel I'm physically fit and I, I love playing sport. I love the game. I love the camaraderies, I love the friendships, I love everything that comes with playing the sport and sometimes the failure is part of the sport and you've got to learn to enjoy that whole process and that experience as well. So I think the love of the sport kept me going for those two years and, and I think I was able to turn it around in, in 2009 and 10 and finish off you know, my career on, on a relatively decent note. So uh, I think for me the thing that's kept me going is just the fact that I've loved this sport and I played it more as a hobby and as a profession than you know, looking at it as purely as a career. So I have a small request. Can I have your autograph? Yeah, sure. <laughs> In this book? Yeah. Yes. Very smart move, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that coming. He just... <laughs> My. Mic volume. Check. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah. Yes. I love your hairstyle. <laughs> so, uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. So, recently you have been selected as the head coach of NCA Bangalore. Uh, no, I have not been here. That's just in the newspaper. Okay, yes, please. Good morning, sir. My name is Umang Agrawal and I'm a physiotherapist. So a question related to my profession, like how the physiotherapy has evolved with cricket over the years and what is the expectation of a sports person from a physiotherapist on field and off the field? Yeah, it's one of the professions that's probably changed the most in, in from my career. You know, I, I think when we first, um, when we first started touring and I first remember early, um, physiotherapy meant uh, using a, a machine and uh, you know any spot you found you just put some uh, some gel there and you and you you rotated it uh, that was the level of physiotherapy and uh, and and honestly it's it was never uh, uh, it was never considered that very important but i think today you know the way the sport has changed the way how physical and how powerful the sport has become and how professional it's become uh, the role of people like physiotherapists has become very, very important. Um, you know, I think physiotherapy again in India, I think, has been a, in a growing field. If you were to look back, you know, in the past, we always relied on foreign physios and, and uh, you know, for knowledge, for for expertise, because they had more experience, having you know, uh, being involved in teams at a more professional level uh, in their countries, whether it was Australia, England, or South Africa. But today, you know, I'm happy to say that our Indian physiotherapists, we have. All our A-team support staff is, is Indian physiotherapists. We have Indian physiotherapists in the national team, right down to the under-19 level. Everyone in the NCA is an Indian physiotherapist now who's, who's trained here and, and, and studied here. Um, so the quality of Indian physiotherapy has certainly you know, gone up to a completely different level, thanks to institutions like this and, and people who are pushing the boundaries here in the country. Um, the expectations from sportsmen on physiotherapists, I think, is is, is a very, very important relationship because it's sometimes a career-defining relationship. Uh, you know, what players want and what sportsmen want from their physiotherapists is trust. You know, trust that they have their interests the best in, at, at all times. You know, I think sportsmen um, really need to feel that not only is a physiotherapist knowledgeable and he knows what he's talking about, but he has the best interests of the player at heart and he will give him honest and um, honest feedback irrespective of the consequences. I think that honesty is very, very important. We can do that uh, autograph session perhaps a little later. Uh, good move again. Thanks. Okay, yes. So you've been playing for the Indian team you had played for so long. So any interesting story from the locker room or dugout? <laughs> One of the things we say is what stays, what, what's in, what happens in the locker room stays in the locker room. Locker. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yes. Yeah. Hello, sir. We are sports scientists here. So, my question is, uh, which team apart from India uh, can make into finals 
in World Cup. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's good, I like the optimism. I, I'm also rooting for that. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'd say England is probably, you know, uh, being the hosts, I think they, they, they're playing really well at the moment. They've got a really good balance in their team. Uh, they're playing well at home. You know, but having said that, actually, just seeing the kind of results Australia have had over the last few months, you know, they're, they're really coming on really well. So I think there are going to be four or five teams that, uh, you know, are going to be competing for those sort of to be there on the final day and, you know, India is definitely one of them. Super, here, please. Uh, good morning, sir. Myself, Naman Lavanya. Sir, given the current team, uh, which team would you like to coach or play for? The given IPL edition. The given IPL edition? Yes, sir. So, you might as well start with, uh, you know... <laughs> it's not, not, a good, uh, not a good answer. No, I, 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 <laughs> I'm coaching the Indian under-19 and A-team, so I'm happy with that. Okay. <laughs> Hello, sir. So it's a great honor to be in face to face with you. I'm a maxillofacial surgeon, basically. And I still remember the day when you were hit on your cheekbone by a baller and my mother was literally crying because whenever you came out to bat, she used to feel that her son is batting on the field. So that was a very emotional moment, I still remember. And being a maxillofacial surgeon makes me proud right now because one of us treated you that time, if I'm not wrong. So my question so to you... So I, owe, I owe somebody in your profession the, the fact that it's kind of okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. The nose, so my, still, the nose is still out of order, so someday I might think of it. Yes, sir, definitely. <laughs> sir, my question to you is, sir, there is always a debate regarding talent and hard work. Because there are some people we say that they are born talented and there are some which are regarded as hard working. What do you think is more important for, su for success? Is it real talent or is it hard work which can make somebody successful. Yeah, sometimes talent is, is, is just hard work that you haven't seen. You know, I think when you say, oh, somebody is really talented, sometimes you haven't actually seen the years and years of hard work because when you get to see someone, you get to see them, oh, yeah, he's very talented, but it's years and years of work that's come into that. Uh, I think uh, talent without hard work at a very elite and a professional level, uh, at the top level, just does not work because there are a lot of talented people and a lot of people who work hard. So you've got to combine both of them. You know, I don't think there's an and or in this situation. It has to be both of it. It has to be talent and hard work. I mean, the higher you get, you can get away with just pure talent at a lower level. You can get away sometimes with pure hard work at a lower level. But you need to be able to, you know, um, have both of them at, at a really elite and a, and a top class level. If you, if you work hard, there's definitely you can, you know, improve your talent, you can get better. But if you have talent and you don't work hard, then there's no way that you're going to improve and you're going to get constantly better and somewhere along the line you're going to get, get stuck. So I think having hard work and having respect for your profession and what you do is very, very important and more important, I'd say, than a natural gift that you have. Yes. Hello, sir. Good to see you. So you are known as one of the best test cricketer ever. So for test cricket, you have to have a proper mindset. Like especially when you are playing against Australia, you know what go, goes on on the field. You have to be calm. There might be wickets falling down. There might be no much runs coming up. How do you keep yourself calm and how do you keep going in that situation? Uh, so, one of the things was to focus on things that you can control. Um, I mean, what somebody else is saying, wickets are falling, you can't control that. What you can control, like you said rightly, is, is your mindset at that point of time. Right? My, mindset is, my mindset was to try and be as positive as possible, uh, to always want to enjoy the contest. You know, sometimes when things get tough and when things get hard and the pressure builds up, uh, you can either decide to run away from it or be fearful of it or you can see it as an opportunity or you can see it as um, you can see it as something that I enjoy and I loved being part of a contest. I loved being part of a pressure situation. I loved being when it was tougher the more you sort of enjoyed it. So yeah, I think you can look at those situations and see them as opportunities or as threats and and you know seeing them as an opportunity is, 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 is honestly is uh, is more important. Okay, we might have just enough time for maybe one or two questions at best. Yes. Uh, good morning, sir. Morning. Uh, my question is that 
when we were small the 90s kids we used to play a lot of cricket we used to watch cricket we used to go on street and play cricket but nowadays uh, after a lot of video games and all have come lot of mobile phone and gadgets have come so children nowadays prefer playing games uh, rather than playing cricket and pubg and etc so uh, is the spirit of cricket becoming less day by day and what should we do to uh, help it yeah, by going outside yourself and playing, you know, being great role models. I think that is, uh, and you're right, I think it is a really a true challenge today. Um, I think in, in the age of uh, so much of alternative uh, entertainment, I think as young kids growing up, uh, we didn't have the opportunities and uh, things to do that, say, may young children have today. I mean, the access to computers and tablets and uh, malls and shopping centers and other forms of entertainment, you know, movies that probably were not there and, and you were forced to go out and play. So I think the way to, it, to do that is to be role models in the environment that you're in, in every environment that you're in. If you are, go out and you play and you encourage your friends to play, you know, rather than sitting in the hostel and, and playing, what is that, PUBG or all, all the, by the way, all the under-19 guys love playing that, whatever that is. <laughs> hmm. Yes, sir. I, initially, I thought it was some pub or something they were talking about. It's like, no, anyway, sir. but... So I think, you know, it's really important that you, you go out and play and you encourage your friends to do it. And, and the more you do it, and you, you, it's just a healthier way of life. And, uh, and I think that is really important. And I think once you get people, get hooked, people hooked on to playing a sport, uh, you know, I think they'll find that they get more joy and satisfaction out of that than in any other, you know, games that, computer games that they play. Yes, sir. We used to watch the players mimic their shots, uh, break windows, glasses, everything. We, that phase was different. Now, I've never seen anyone playing like that. Yeah, I mean, nowadays probably people are more stricter also. If you <laughs> broke a window, they make you pay for it. So they say no. <laughs> okay, one last question. Yes, you've been waiting. Thank you. Uh, hi, Rahul. My dad is yeah. a huge, huge fan of cricket and you. Thank you. So his question to you is, if you weren't a cricketer, what else would you have been? <laughs> like, you know, I, I, I did commerce, so I did commerce in, in, in college, it uh, was my back, back up, so I was telling uh, someone if, if I sort of, if cricket didn't work out for me and sort of, in my, part of my backup plan was either to try and do a CA or to guy, try and get into tap me or something here in, the, in Manipal, so uh, that was my backup, uh, I'm not sure how I would have gone and how I would have succeeded because Honestly, some of my marks in college, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be mentioning it here. But, uh, uh, but, but no, I, uh, yeah, it was like, I don't really know what I would have been, honestly. Uh, I'm lucky, like I said, you know, I'm grateful and lucky that I've been able to make my hobby my profession. Awesome. Okay, a few people would like to ask him questions too. Oh, we know the sports secretary, go for it. So this is in fact a vice chancellor's uh, question. He wanted me to ask you this. The youngsters these days, they taste instant success. In the sense that if you look at Rishabh Pant or anybody else who's playing the IPL, they make crores of money at a very, very young age. How do you, in addition to cricket, train them to sort of uh, manage the success, which is very important. We, we, we might have lost many of the youngsters because of success going to their heads. So, Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that I'm really happy about, though, is that there is more money in the sport. You know, I think that, like you know, I said that, you can actually, and I answered that question earlier as well, you can actually think of the sport as a profession and a career. And I think that has its advantages as well. The fact that a lot of these young boys, you know, can focus on cricket, can spend a lot of dedicated time on playing cricket and not worrying about the financial side of things, uh, because they're being compensated well, helps raise the standard of the sport. You know, you look at the level of physical fitness today, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, these boys are training a lot, they're practicing a lot more, they are, you know, spending more time in the gym because they have that more time. They, they, they're dedicated professional sportsmen. You know, so there are advantages with, with obviously the sport becoming more professional and more money in the sport. Yes, there are some challenges with it that always come with it. And, you know, those are things that people need to be careful about and need to address. In a country like India where there is so much of competition, so many young players coming, every year new people are coming in, new players are coming in. You know, I think it's just the fact that there is so much competition keeps a lot of these players on their toes, forces them to stay um, on the right path. And, and in every year and every generation there might be a few people that might miss out or that might uh, 
that might get carried away. But for every person that get carried away, you know, there are others who actually use that as a great opportunity to upgrade their skills and to, and to get constantly uh, better. You know, one of, one of the things I always, um, you know, sort of tell a lot of the younger players and who, you know, who, who get a lot of this sort of fame and uh, success is that in the end, you know, you're not, you need to be patient and success is judged not only in a few years, but your true success over time will be judged on how your consistency over a period of time, you know, can you play for India for 10 years? Can you play for 15 years? What is your level of success? So there's something to be said about longevity. There's something to be said about consistency. It's not about just one or two good seasons or one or two good years. You know, people, and the next person will come in. But the people who are truly remembered are people who have been successful over a long period of time. And that takes patience, that takes perseverance. You know, and that's a challenge that you have to throw out to the, a lot of the younger, player, younger people and, and younger players, is that success and true success takes time. It takes perseverance, it takes years of work. Um, it's not overnight. Hi, Rahul. Uh, it's not a serious question. It's, uh, some of my friends wanted me to ask this question. Uh, you know, the India-Pakistan match is always a high-pressure match. In fact, many people feel people watching are under more pressure than the players are actually playing true, on the ground. True, true. Actually. So, I just wanted to know, is it really that extra pressure or you just take it just like another game? Look, I mean, as much as we like to think about it as just another game, we know that, I mean, for a player's perspective, I don't prepare any differently for, oh, it's a Pakistan match, I should prepare differently. No, my preparation for a Pakistan game or a Bangladesh game or Australia game was always the same. You know, I was, I believe that I, am, I have to be professional enough to prepare and, and approach each and every game the same way. That should never change just because, you know, this is a World Cup final or it's not a World Cup final or it's any match. You know, that level of professionalism, you know, I, 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 I was hoping that I had. But, uh, but you know that it just means more to so many other people. You know, it's probably one of the most watched matches in any World Cup. You know, when you play an India-Pakistan game, the television viewing or the people watching the game will probably be the most in the whole competition. So I think that is there at the back of your mind. But from a player's perspective, you don't change anything in your preparation. But yes, there is a certain amount of pressure or an edge to the game that is there always in the background. Yes, Krishna. I'm Dr. Krishna Prasad, the president of Udupi District Cricket Association. Me and Professor Bellar is also honorary president of our Udupi District Cricket Association from the last 10 years. We've been trying hard to make our boys best uh, to go into the state level, under 14, under 16, under 19 level. But what I just want, since you are a coach of under 19 and even also our uh, uh, junior cricket team, um, how, this is actually I should not ask in front of the media people how exactly we, we can there are a lot of good boys will be there but uh, to make them to go into the proper team like whether it's like a state level or national level or this thing see whatever we think that whatever we today I think after, before coming here Professor Ballar might have taken you to the ground and you would you could be able to see a lot of uh, young kids uh, where they're all from Udupi only what is the best way actually apart from this we are coaching we think that we are of course robin is also our friend he's also joined hands with us is there a um, you know such a really nice environment to play on i think the more and more exposure that you're able to give your young boys at a, at a young age you know i think that is important the more matches they play the more games they play i think one of the things that tends to happen in in bigger cities um, and i think that's something that's changing you're seeing now a lot of times even in our under 19 teams a lot of the boys are coming from smaller towns and cities i mean kl rahul is from mangalo he's grown up in mangalo so you know that's in a sense it's an inspiration for a lot of young boys that it can it can be achieved so what if you're from udupi so what if you're from uh, manipal or so what you know there are so many boys um, you know uh, dhoni is from ranchi nobody would have thought in the old days so things are changing slowly and I think that's an inspiration and that also shows that there's so much of talent in smaller towns and cities. But what sometimes happens is because traditionally there have been more matches, more tournaments in bigger towns, the boys in the towns maybe get a little bit more match practice. They get more exposure. So I think giving young boys more exposure and because you can play as much as you want in the nets until you're actually exposed to the, the level of competition, until you're exposed to success and failure in a match situation. Uh, that level of learning does not happen as quickly. Okay. Rahul, before we let you um, unveil the theme for the upcoming Manipal Marathon, finally, is there a 
philosophy that you swear by, your philosophy of life generally, life in general, a particular philosophy that you swear by? I can't think of like <laughs> a philosophy that I swear by or anything, but, but I think I've answered like a lot of the stuff that the boys and, and girls here asked me. Um, like I said, one of the very important things for me and I think is constantly to keep learning, uh, to constantly look ahead, um, you know, recognize that you're always going to make mistakes and things are always going to be tough at times, but you know, there's always, um, there's, you know, there's always hope in a better tomorrow, there's always hope to look forward if you're willing to learn, if you're willing to improve, if you're constantly on that quest to get better. How about a thunderous round of applause for the wall, Rahul Dravid. Fantastic, Rahul, pleasure having you. you. Thank you so much. Thanks for your... I want, we want you to do this. Uh, just... Okay, so... Um, you know about the Manipal marathons? You I've just heard about it. Yeah. Yes, so yeah. the, the folks with the orange tissue, they are the organizers of the Manipal marathons. Okay. 10,000 and more people come and turn in numbers and wow. it's growing Incredible. every year. Incredible. And they have relevant themes every year. Okay. What you will be doing right now is actually unveiling this year's theme. Okay. But before that, just a couple of lines about the Manipal marathon. Okay. Runners okay. Club. Yeah. yeah, so uh, I envy all of you uh, because I wish I could run a marathon myself. <laughs> But unfortunately, What's the longest you've run? Uh, no training. I, I I used to really enjoy running. I must admit, but my knees and my uh, my knees and my heels don't allow me to run that much. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm walking nowadays. I just walk. They have uh, great hospitals. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but but no, I I think it's it's incredible that what uh, all of you are doing here in uh, in through the through the college through the university. Uh, you know, just encouraging so many young people to, to run, to participate in marathons, aligning it with a very noble cause and a very noble, uh, you know, um, uh, so, uh, so use, using, using that as a way to raise social awareness about something that is so very important. So I think it's incredible what's happening here and just congratulations to all of you and all the best and hope it's uh, more successful than ever. Mr. So Rahul, by pressing this button, you'll be unveiling the theme for Manipal Marathon 2020 and we would like to all see you do that together. Yeah. And the theme for Manipal Marathon 2020 is Run for Organ Donation. It's on the 9th February 2020. I remember Vinod saying this always happens on the second Sunday. Manipal Marathon 2020, organ donation, that's the theme. <laughs> Mr. Rahul Dravid, on behalf of all of us and my personal behalf, thanks a ton for joining us. Absolute pleasure talking to you. With lots of love, one thunderous cheers and round of applause for Rahul Dravid. Thank you, Rahul.